Hi guys, welcome back to Manifest with Armine. Um, so every once in a while, I hear an amazing story that I'm fascinated by, and maybe that's just because I'm a little obsessed with Neville and his work. <laughs> but um, this story I really wanted to share with you on my channel because I thought you would really love to hear it as well. So today I have a special guest. His name is John, and he has a very interesting encounter story um, with Neville and a couple other interesting people. Um, so I'm just going to kind of uh, hand over the, the, the space for him to just talk to us about it and, and, and tell us his memories. John? <laughs> okay. Um, ask away. What, what kind of questions do you actually have? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, let let me start off by kind of setting it up that I was um, following something in a in a Facebook group about Neville Goddard, and I believe it was actually about whether or not Neville charged for his lectures. Is that right? John? Right. Right. Okay. So, and then you came in and said something wonderful, and you mentioned something about you yourself. You saw that. Um, you were very I saw my mom, yes. uh, Lucille Ball, and um, uh, his name fell out of my head now. <laughs> 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 he didn't mean anything to me when I was a kid. Okay. Uh, Rod Serling, a Twilight Zone creator. Yes, okay. yes. And, and so how, how old were you at the time? I was four. And what... what so really what? nothing mattered to me at the time, but candy and toys. So none of these people really mean, mean anything to me. I mean, Lucy, Lucy was a friend of my mom's. I don't actually remember when she met her, but uh, she kind of, my mom had a, a rough life. Uh, she grew up in 126 foster homes. She was abused. And Lucy kind of took her on as a, um, I don't know, she kind of was a mentor to her. And every now and then she would uh, show up at her apartment and take my mom out shopping or something like that. Sometimes Desi would come by and uh, my dad was kind of a drinking buddy with his. Uh, but other than that, uh, celebrities didn't mean anything to me growing up. I grew up in Hollywood, California, all over California. I moved to New York. I lived a, a year in New York before moving to Wichita, Kansas, and then to a Lake in Nebraska, and finally here in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, the birthplace of Judy Garland. <laughs> but, um, so you've, had, yeah, you, you've seen a lot of interesting places in your life then. Yeah, celebrities didn't actually mean anything to me until I was about seven, and my brother got uh, Leonard Nimoy's autograph, and I realized, hey, that's, that's Spock, you know, <laughs> before that, you know, unless it were someone like Batman, Adam West, you know, it wouldn't have mattered anything to me, you know, right. so, um, yeah, I wasn't, my mom was all freaked out when, uh, basically, uh, Lucille Ball was turned on to Neville by Rod Serling, Rod Serling was actually a student of Neville's um, for quite a while, uh, I mean, he back since the early 50s, he had been attending his lectures and stuff like that. And I believe I can't I can't confirm it because I can't I can't find any other evidence of this. And unfortunately, my mom's the only my, my mom is dead. So uh, my mom was the only source of this that I had, you know, besides just my own recollection, which you know I was four. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, um, Serling I believe is the person in Neville's lecture. Uh, that he refers to as the person that says that he uh, got the producer to go from good to great to absolutely sensational. Um, I remember that lecture. Like several other points in, in, in the various lectures uh, um, where, where uh, he talks about this writer that wrote him and told him about the uh, um, being able to see things from a different perspective as if you were on a boat and you're above the river and you can see things coming down each side of the river and stuff. Uh, and he told him of his dream where he's this, uh, where he's this dead body and then he, and he animates down into everything else and stuff. So, yes, yeah. Yes. I remember that so, yeah. Um, but other than that, no, uh, I don't, I, I didn't have any, uh, what happened was um, I had uh, on my birthday, which was uh, May 18th, I had, a, it, it was 1971. <laughs> um <clears throat> I got a rabbit. His, uh, his name was Ascaba, which was, uh, I was in the anagrams at the time, so it was Basket. Uh, <laughs> I got a rabbit, and I accidentally dropped the rabbit off of the balcony of our apartment, and it died. 
and I dreamed of it and the, and, and the rabbit said there was everything was okay and whatnot but but I was still depressed the next day a couple of days later uh Lucy took my mom to see Neville and she's like you know it might you know cheer him up I was not you know she was always dragging me to preachers because she was always you know trying to find something you know to replace the heartbreak in her life you know right. so yeah um so I went to see this guy who <laughs> was just an animated old man to me you know <laughs> yeah. um but uh the, the um the lecture was god and i are one mm. and according to um mind serpent that was on uh, may 22nd 1971 okay i'm not positive <laughs> but that was i remember the lecture and i remember him talking about going to visit his wife in the hospital after the question and answer periods after that so oh, okay. that's about all i can actually remember of it after the lecture uh he was uh, shaking hands with people and stuff like that and uh he didn't seem to be you know impressed by rod serling i mean he already knew him so <laughs> there wasn't this, oh my god it's rod serling <laughs> it's, his buddy. it's his buddy already and Lucy was, you know, Lucy was constantly, gr growing up, my mom could almost always get me pictures of, like, uh, autographed pictures of the Spider-Man, when, when Nicholas Hammond played Spider-Man in the 70s, or, or the Incredible Hulk. I, I had pictures of on my wall of uh, Star Wars um, guys and, and, and autographs of them and whatnot, because my mom basically, you know, write or call up Lucy and she said, oh, no problem. You know, <laughs> that was kind of the way it was. <laughs> that, that, that must be nice. I'm sure a lot of us would, <laughs> would love to have that type of uh, access to things like yeah. that. It's great. But uh, so, yeah, the, the, my encounter with Neville came down to just simply, you know, he, he saw me, he shook my hand, he patted me on the head and he said, John, Jehovah is graceful. You know, and that was it. And for me, you know, and you were, just kind of, kind of a weird guy. <laughs> you were four years old. You were four years old. Right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't really discover him until I was about seven. I found uh, uh, Awakened Imagination and the Resurrection and Your Face is Your Fortune uh, in a bookstore. And I, I had been reading since I was four anyway, uh, the Shakespeare. So wow. I've been interpreting Shakespeare as, as, as more of a spiritual thing than, than, than as a story anyway. So it coincided exactly with what I, I, I felt was right. So, um, but I didn't actually know that the Neville that I met was the same Neville that I read in the books Amazing. until the internet age came along and YouTube. And I listened to a YouTube uh, video and I'm like, oh my Oh my God, that, that, that's the guy I heard. That's that old guy, you know? So I called my uh, my mom up and granted this was just before she died and her brain was kind of going south. So, you know, she filled me in as much as she could on the details, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That was my meeting with Neville Goddard. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. I, I, I don't know what is more fascinating. The fact that you saw him, saw him while you were with your mom and Lucille Ball and company, or the fact that you, for years you studied his work and, and um, knew so much about him and didn't realize that that was the guy that you had seen when you were four years old. And I had only had the books, really. <laughs> <laughs> the lectures, you know, I mean, it, it was all pretty much, well, you know, like anything else, I tried different things, you know, different spiritual, um, you know, I can't say that I, I stuck to, Neville's been my rock for about, for, for, for over 40 years. I haven't always stuck close to that rock. Sometimes I've faded off and swam in other directions and whatnot, but I've, I've always come back to that rock. So, yeah. That's, um, that's I think, just the, the, the most that we can really expect because we're human and, <laughs> and there really is no need to, you know, to constantly be just perfect in the way of always saying what Neville, you know, told, told us we can do, you know, because we always forget. We always, we, oh, we'll always forget who we are now and then. And that's, that's just the beauty of this, <laughs> of this life experience. And, and um, that's just so, so amazing. Um, wow. So you, you not only met Neville, um, but you actually spent your life, you know, understanding his work and, and that's just so amazing. I can imagine in that moment when you realized, was, was it because you saw his photo in the YouTube videos? Was it one of those that had his photo? 
Um, no, it, was, it was just it was just a um, a, a voice on. Uh, let's see, it was a, one of those things that had um. A slideshow. Like, um, just a bunch of cute images, you know, yeah. and it, you know, but I, I knew, I knew that when Neville Goddard was the person that I was, you know, listening to yes. because, <clears throat> you know, that was who I looked up, you know, in the books, you know. Um, how did you realize that was the same guy that you? Well, the voice, the voice. I mean, he has a voice that pretty much you can't find anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and so and then I, and then yeah. I searched. I did a lot of searching for, you know, hopefully that exact le lecture that I attended, you know, and and it matched the most, you know, when, when I found it on Mind Serpent um, and I listened to it and I listened to it from other sources that, that cleaned it up a little better, you know, especially the, the, the question and answer part afterwards where he was talking about going to visit his wife in the hospital. Uh, she was go having throat surgery or something like that. I remembered that, you know, but again, uh, I was four, so you know I didn't have. <laughs> that's amazing. I think that's wonderful that you even remember that much from when you were four. Because I don't know if I remember too much about when I was four years old, but I have a great, I have a great memory for, for 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 most details and names and faces and stuff like that. I have a horrible. I could. I'm someone that can get lost in Walmart. You know, I mean, I have a horrible memory for directions and buildings, you know, a building is a building to me. So if you ask me what church was it or what, what auditorium was it, I, can't tell. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know that there was probably only about maybe 200 or 300 people there. It wasn't a big, you know, huge, you know, thousands of people lecture or something like that. Do you, do you, do you remember the venue that this where this happened? The name of the venue? Was it because I, from what I understand, he... Um, often lectured at the Wilshire Ebel Theater on Wilshire Boulevard. Um, but if this was one of his later lectures, it actually might have been somewhere else because in, in one of his later lectures, he said that he hadn't been lecturing at the Ebel in, in a while. So Yeah, it was, it, it, I don't know, somewhere in LA yeah. or San Francisco. I can't, I mean, <laughs> I don't even, I mean, we got in a car, you know, uh, we met Lucy, and, <laughs> and that was that, you know. <laughs> She introduced my mom to Rod Serling, and my mom was like, Rod Serling! You know, I didn't know who Rod Serling was until a few years later when I watched him on Twilight Zone. So. Right. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, I had to, the name sounded familiar when you when you were telling me about that part of the story, but I I, I had to look him up to see exactly what work he had done, because I, I, offhand, I didn't, you know, know yeah. his repertoire. <laughs> so, a couple yeah. of his writers were also, um, you know, also learned at least a few things from Neville. And you, you that's the thing. Most people, you know, Neville had a lot of influence in Hollywood. I mean, he was a dancer originally, uh, traveled all over the world dancing and whatnot. And uh, he at one point was an astrologer and had um, pretty much the whole Metropolitan uh, Opera as his uh, clients. And uh, so, yeah, he, he had a lot of connections with various people. And you, you can look at various movies in Hollywood and you can actually see the influence. In it. I mean, Field of Dreams, I mean, that's, pro that's practically pure novel. In fact, uh, one, of the, um, um, one of the assistants uh, to the director, uh, his uh, grandfather had attended uh, Neville. And that was what led to the suggestion that uh, Ray Consult, not Ray Consult, John Consult, Con, 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 yeah, I can't pronounce his name, uh, the, the, um, <laughs> Kevin Costner's dad in the movie, they made him a young man instead, you know, because mm -hmm. Neville's talking about the afterlife and how, you know, people mm -hmm. are about 20 or so, yeah, mm -hmm. so that was one of the things. And then there's, um, oh, what, what's his name? Um, uh, John Payne, uh, both John Payne and, oh, I can't remember the director of the movie's name. Uh, something, Sibbins, Siemens, uh, Siemens, something like that. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. Um, the, the, the movie uh, Miracle on 34th Street. I mean, faith is believing when common sense tells you not to. That's that's pure Neville there. I mean, yeah. to this day, to this day, there are films made and based on these concept the laws of mind and and that's interesting because i mean look at disney right look at walt disney and look at everything that 
Um, yeah. You know, it's funny, and because you know, growing growing up, you know, we were, sometimes we were told to not believe in those things because you don't want to get disappointed in life. But right. imagine that the truth is that that is actually how things happen, and protecting yeah. ourselves is actually what's hurting us. <laughs> Trying to protect ourselves from our dreams is what's you know complicating our lives more than than it has to be. Yeah. Um, that's um, wow, and so feel the dream. Wow. There was something else I wanted to ask you. It slipped my mind for a moment, but I'm sure I'm sure it'll come up. Um, interesting. So yeah, I, it, what I want, I want to say why do you think? But I guess we all have our own theories, um, and I guess ultimately it doesn't matter. But if Neville was so big back then and he had so much influence and so many friends who were influential, why do we not even see his name in 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 anything except for it seems like this Neville community? Um, and it is it is an interesting thing. It's like I mean, you look up his pictures even just to do a Google search on his pictures, then you find maybe ten or yeah, twenty at most pictures of the guy. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, you could generally look up almost anyone from that time period that's not even famous and still find a bunch of I mean, especially from from the time period of you know in like 1905, I think it was until um, <clears throat> uh, 72. You know. You look up pretty much any ordinary person and find a bunch of fools. Of course, I don't know how much, you know, has been. I know that uh, uh, Mitch Horowitz has uh, interviewed um, uh, Victoria, his daughter, and has managed to get a few photos out of her album. Oh, really? Uh, oh, okay. Well, what, 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 you know, I think he's planning on another book or something like that. I don't know. I saw I saw one of the pictures um, in the in the Facebook group of Neville shaking somebody's hand or just standing before them or something. And I recognized the woman that was standing there next to him. I recognized, I actually just recognized her dress, but I recognized the woman. <laughs> and I, I, I asked in the, in the group, you know, is Mitch planning on, you know, putting out another book or something? Because I recognize this woman in this picture and it's possible that I can actually <laughs> be seen in, if there's more pictures of this, 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 this point here, there might even be a picture of me there or, or my mom or Lucille Ball. <laughs> So, and yeah, I, I, you know, it's I probably not, but you know, <laughs> it's funny because one of the things that I mentioned in the Facebook in the Facebook group, which I, I don't, I hadn't mentioned on my on my YouTube channel before, but um, I've sort of made a habit of every year um, visiting um, his daughter's Neville's daughter's home, which was, I believe, their old family home. Yeah, um, I saw you stalking it the other day. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the only time I've mentioned it was in that group and. It was, I got kind of mixed responses from that, but anyway, like, all I do is pretty much a girl, I leave a small bouquet of little flowers and a card, that's it. Um, and um, it's only been a few years I've been doing that, and it just, honestly, it makes me feel good to just be in the presence of that street, knowing Neville, you know, <laughs> went in and out of that home probably, and, and just, you know, since we can't say thank you to him, I felt like if we can just send that through his daughter and just, I don't know, you know, just put it out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I know she's a private person from what I've read, so I don't try to, you know, talk to her. Yeah, according to Mitch, he doesn't have, want to have anything to do with, you know, Neville people anymore. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and... and but, I thought, you know, I can understand that, you know. Yeah. I mean, he had a lot of influence and stuff like that, you know. Oh, yeah, because um, actually when I was going through my course for... Um, metaphysical counseling and things like that there was a specifically a part of the course that said there there will be people who will show up at your house <laughs> who, who will be obsessed with you because of the help that you offer in the first place so um because yeah i know people who have like uh, uh altars and they got pictures of neville on their altars and, and some other <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is exactly the opposite of what, it's exactly what the opposite of what he said to do yeah but you know, <laughs> exactly Exactly. Human it's nature just, tends to be they either worship or, or, or attack that which they don't necessarily understand, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. So it, it just it just seems sort seems sort of strange. I mean Yeah, there's anyway, so I'm surprised that he got that Mitch Horowitz you're saying got an interview with her in the first place. Is this something that is I, I don't even know about this. Is it in a book or uh he did several uh, Mitch has written several books on um metaphysical um leaders in the path uh, occult uh, and, and and so some somewhat uh 
characters like that. Um, he's also looked into the, uh, he's, he's come up with a couple um, possible people who are Abdullah okay. as well. Yeah, look him up. He's got some, some information. Yeah, some of it. He, some of it he actually had to be corrected on by some some other people too. So, <laughs> but he has at least yeah interviewed um, uh, Victor Victoria, and also I think he came out with a book that was uh, it was uh, <clears throat> uh, one of Neville's books that have Neville's actual notes in it, you know. Yes. And it was authorized by by Victoria. Yeah. Actually, <clears throat> I, I think if you if you look up Victoria Goddard, um, one of the results that comes up is I think. If I'm not, if I'm not um, mistaken, it's the power of awareness with Neville's notes in it. So maybe that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah. Right. Which is which? Um, somebody had mentioned that. Um, I don't know. Do you know anything about Freedom Berry? Yeah. Yeah, I've studied him a little bit. I mean, I haven't met him or anything like right. that. But yeah, he he had a lot of information about Neville too. Like, let like, for instance, when Neville um, first started doing the uh, talk telling people about the promise instead of the law. Mm -hmm. You know, he had like 200 people uh, there one night and then he started talking about the promise and he had 30, you know, <laughs> the next night. <laughs> right. And he's, and, and I, I think it was quoted that Neville had said that. He'll preach to the empty walls if he yeah. had to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's interesting. I think that's maybe part of why he stopped lecturing at the Ebel, which is the, a huge venue. Um, yeah. I think that's why he went on to go to smaller um, venues, but um, he stuck to his um, his what he knew. So that that that's that's good. That says that um, confirms even further that he was a man of integrity. He wasn't just going yeah. to huge crowds. <laughs> well, that's also what gets me about Neville. I mean, yeah, he charged for some things. He also did things for free. I mean, not not. I mean, the the implication that people get or that people like to get is that he was someone that just you know. Um, showed up somewhere and uh, <clears throat> did everything for free, you know, because a lot of people nowadays charge a lot of money for things and, and, and they, they want to separate them from that kind of person. But no, he, he made a living at what he did. Uh, but but uh, for, according to my mom, there was not a time that if, he, if someone simply wrote him or asked, you know, or, or sometimes he would actually take perfect strangers and their whole family and, you know, invite them to you know, the meeting and pay for it himself. Right. You know. Right. Um, so I remember that actually reminds me that you had written in that comment in the group about you remember that when you went were there as a child that um, you guys did pay and you remember yeah. how much it was per person. How much? Yeah. Uh, at the time, it was five dollars. Well, there were there were different seats, and I um, I, I saw my mom. And Lucy, actually, Lucy paid for my mom. But I saw my mom and Lucy and Rod Serling put five dollars into. It wasn't. It wasn't like an offering plate that went around. It was just like sort of this kitty at the front of the thing when you when you go in. Oh, kitty is the right word, but you know, it was, it was a box. That's interesting. <laughs> <Nice wooden> box. <laughs> so it was like an it was an offering pretty much to go in, but just it wasn't. Maybe it's a suggested donation. <laughs> Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I That's think cool. back then uh, the honor system was a uh, was kind of a bigger thing here. I don't now. I don't know if they would do that nowadays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here's the box. We trust they're gonna put the money in there because he had to. Well, he did have to. Get out. <laughs> he did have to. Oh yeah, exactly. He did have to pay the rent for the venue, which was usually pretty pricey. And I, and I remember one of the lectures he had said that um, he would put a, a full page ad out every week in the Sunday LA Times. Um, and he would send out um, postcards, advertisements too. So all those things add up and make sense. And it's funny because when when you when you mentioned that that each of you had um, had put five dollars as admission, sort of, you know, um, I looked I looked up what five dollars of that time of like around 1970 would be for now, and it's about forty dollars. So yeah, yeah, it's about right. Yeah, it's just just to yeah put some perspective on it. Five dollars now would be um, I'm, I don't know if you can get into any lecture for five dollars unless it's in a bookstore or something. <laughs> but um, pretty much yeah. yeah. And um, so I, I don't know if you you've uh, seen seen any of my other videos, but I I I've been in touch with Lindell. Are you familiar with Lindell? 
I'm familiar uh, with him in that I, I, I watched a few of his videos before and then you started posting the ones and you, and uh, I, yeah, it's very fascinating. He's a really interesting guy. Yeah, I mean, this, this conversation with you alone is wonderful. Like, <laughs> it's, and, and it's very reminiscent of um, the conversation I had with Lindell on the phone. I mean, we talked for about an hour and, um, you know, I can talk about this stuff for days on end, but um, it was just so, uh, it was so amazing just hearing him um, you know, because he has his own way, as you know, of of of, te of speaking about um, the law and all that stuff, and just to hear someone's perspective who was a student of Neville and you know for years, and he was there in Tom in person, and you were very young then, and and you're not you're not as advanced in, in years as, as I'm not a student. No, I mean <laughs> I mean I'm a student by 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 by. By means of yeah, I've read his books and and I practiced yeah. it, but no, I I you know I didn't learn under him. <laughs> but I mean, either either way, of course, every story has its own fascinating aspect. But it was just so crazy because we in this community of Neville Goddard followers, let's say, and we're not followers; we're all our own leaders. But <laughs> it's it, it's funny because we all have our own uh, picture of Neville, and and of course, some of us. Because we think he's so great, think he never charged. Because someone so good could never charge, and then we, just like that, we kind of like I guess like to make, we like to make our own assumptions about about what yeah. he was like. But um, yeah, yeah, it, it's just it's always good to hear about Neville as the human being he was, and and that's just so wonderful that that you are sharing with us your experience of. of of uh, encountering him as a child and, and just the circumstances that happened in and that's so great and I, I appreciate it so much I know that <laughs> I know that it must have been kind of strange for someone to just approach you in the group and say hey can we have an interview <laughs> really quick um, that's cool I've never done this before so it's cool <laughs> I've, I've actually never hosted an interview um, for my YouTube channel I've I've been hosted by another coach who we often do videos together but this time I had to figure out the technology. I like to be very low tech. <laughs> I had to figure out, you know, which button to press, which platform to use to make sure everything records properly. So hopefully this turns out great. It says recording, so. Um, this is my wife's basement office, so yeah. <laughs> it, looks like, it, looks like, today, so. <laughs> it, it actually looks like you're set up for your own YouTube channel. It looks like you're... <laughs> she does, um, uh, she's marketing, so she does uh, interviews with people all the time, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> also, there you go. There you go. That's great. So it was meant to be. I'm really happy we were able to do this. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I should close soon because I want to keep the video relatively, you know, short. Yeah. Not short but, <laughs> but is there anything you, you, you want to add? Is there anything you want to, you know, close off with? Any last thoughts? Um, according to my mom, she attended a few more lectures. Uh, I what, she was always dragging me to preachers, okay? And she was into pretty much every, I mean, I don't consider Neville today to be a preacher. I, I consider him to be an, an actual, I don't know, preacher gives me a bad taste. Of course, I grew up in a Pentecostal environment. Mm. Uh, literally, the first time I saw a collection plate, I took money out when it went by. <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I... I have a bad taste in my mouth when it comes to the concept of preachers, you know. Um, but uh, according to my mom, you know, the one thing about Neville that that, that, that people said and that, that she noticed was he was human. I mean, he was not a violent person, but he would put someone in their place if they were getting out of line in some way or something like that. Uh, uh, she said that uh, um, Lucy once uh, witnessed him um, basically uh, – push someone down that was basically beating up on a bum. You know, yeah. <laughs> and then he invited the bum into, into his lecture. So, yeah. <laughs> is there, is there any story we can hear about him? You know? <laughs> like any story we hear about him just makes you want to love him more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and I think it's so great because we, in his lectures, we hear him so poised and the way he's speaking is so eloquent. And um, yeah, that's a, I think, I don't know if it has to do with the gentleman of that time or not, but um, it's, 
interesting. Yeah, I could definitely see him as human and, and the way he was with others. And, and and he knew the Bible better than pretty much anyone in the world. Not not since Blake has anyone known the Bible better than Neville. I mean, there, there are stories about him showing up, but he used to do the Joe Pine show. In That's what, exactly what I was going to ask you about right now. Do you have yeah. a recollection of that? Because we have no, no, I've looked all over for that. I've only heard about it, uh, but uh, he used to bring. He used to do that. They said, and, and there was one point where he was on there, and he was uh, debating between a, a, a fundamentalist Pentecostal, a Church of Christ, and a Seventh Day Adventist. I've been all of those at one point. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you have your experience. They were, you know, they were, you know, debating the Bible with him, and uh, according to the story, you know, Neville didn't even have a Bible with him, but he was calling them on things and saying, "Oh, is that is that the Latin Vulgate? Oh, is that the New English Bible? Oh, is that the New International Version? Oh, is that? Oh, you mean this or you mean that? You know, he put them completely in their place. Yeah. And Joe, Joe Pine likes controversy. He likes oh, the, yeah. it was oh, a yeah. very, I've very watched a few of his shows, and I'm like, my God, I wouldn't want to go on this show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's like the I'm father of, uh, of Jerry Springer kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, from, from the bit of research I've done on the Joe Pine show, um, the, the, the history, the records, the archives, it seems that there are about 600 or so um, episodes, and they're all, um, they're all, filed away by the name of the feature guest, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So since Neville wasn't like a feature guest. Feature guest, no, he was he was usually just there to actually <laughs> stand up to people that thought they knew the Bible yeah. better than yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I actually I don't know if it was six hundred episodes, it might have been three hundred or so, but the six hundred number I remember because apparently it cost about six hundred dollars to um, to clean those films and to digitize them uh, yeah. because they're so they're so thin um, the way they were what they were recorded on so yeah. um, now if someone wants to if someone who has access to good chunks of money <laughs> maybe one day I will do that um, wants to have them all <laughs> restored and digitized um, then that would be amazing you know if someone because I'm sure there are students of Neville who <clears throat> it's it's like basically a um, the price of a, I don't know, something like me. This, how much we pay for this desk? My, that must, that might be the equivalent of how much it would cost them <laughs> to do <laughs> a few hundred episodes for six hundred dollars each. You know, and I, I hope that happens one day, or, or um, one by one, if it can be done. I'm sure you know we would see, because you know, we have no video, video of him. So yeah, um, that would be great to see him that way. Um, yep. That's it. Yeah, it, it, it does boggle the mind, though, that, that you can barely find a few pictures of him, you know, and, and no actual video. You know, yeah. it's like any other person, even an ordinary person, not a famous person or anything, living through that time period, you can almost always find pictures of them or, or even video of them, you know, or, well, film. You know. I mean, let's, let's, use, let's use this to encourage anybody who's possibly watching this video and has... Um, photos with him or of him because or you know children or grandchildren of people who you know attended his lectures even in New York back in that time um, yeah if anyone has pictures please come forth and share it with <laughs> and share it with us because um, we, we want to see that stuff thank you John for mentioning Joe Pine because I was gonna ask you that question and um, if you were familiar with his you know experiences there and yeah. I've watched a few few of his videos. <laughs> yeah, me too, cause I was hoping to find Neville in them. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, and and they do have videos um, that have Christian fundamentalists, I guess, on there, but it's not the one with Neville, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for for giving us your time and your your experience, your memories. Um, please let's keep in touch. I'm gonna press the stop record button. Um, okay. So we can say bye to the viewers right now, and then I will say bye to you off recording, okay? Okay, that's um, fine. See you right here. So bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye, guys. Thank you. If you like this video, click like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm going to go say bye to John. Bye.